Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back again to the workbench to look at some more projects that I've been working on. Um, this one's going to follow behind the last update I had posted, uh, just because this is a little bit of overflow of some more projects. And I got some really cool ones I've been working on. Uh, I got four CND gondolas I'm going to show in this one. I got a couple more auto racks and a few more locomotives to just go ahead and share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way here. Uh, so you guys can see what I've been working on. Uh, some of you might recognize these. I was posting some photos of them around online already. Uh, these are both uh, custom built high side CND construction demolition gondolas used by REGX. Uh, these cars were prevalent in the early 2000s. They were mostly uh, used on CSX uh, up east, coming out of New York. Uh, they'd come here to Ohio to get dumped, mainly in Fostoria, Ohio. So I modeled these obviously for my construction demolition trash train. Um, when these were built, they were actually built using old thrall gondolas that they basically spliced four new panel sections into to lengthen, and then they added new top cords to them. And I built the cars prototypically just the way they did the real things. And in this case, I've modeled them as they appeared in their final years of service, uh, kind of 2013, 2014-ish era when a lot of these started getting terminated off the roster and scrapped. Uh, so they're very beat up, they're very dirty, they got some graffiti, uh, but they all came out really good. Uh, the first one here, as you can see, uh, going into the highlights of the actual build, the cars themselves are a lot shorter than this from Athern. This is, a, in, ca uh, in this case, a brand new Athern uh, Thrall Gondola. And I basically cut it in half. I took another car and cut the center section of it out. Um, and I inserted the new panel section that I cut out from the old one into this one to lengthen it like this, as you can see. And then I just grafted the seams with putty. And then I proceeded to custom build my own top cord, this new extension, using 040 inch styrene that I used some uh, custom ribbing pieces for. I added my own ladders, I added some new details like some photo etch walkways, a new brake wheel, some uh, minor end details, the new chain, uh, new trucks. I added these little tie down strips that are along the side that are all torn up and beat up. That's basically just rebar in real life that they welded to the side. Uh, and it usually gets pretty banged up. But in this case, I just modeled that with some styrene. Uh, and in this case, for each of these cars, both of them, I resided and repaneled every one of them with some O, uh, what is this? O5 inch styrene, O05 inch styrene. So each individual little panel here on the top, each individual panel on the side is a custom cut piece of styrene that I bent with a screwdriver, a hammer, I used a back end of an X-Acto blade, and in some cases a paintbrush, and you basically just take the butt end of a paintbrush like this, let's say this piece or this little rectangle square here would be the panel, you just basically burnish the panel with the end of a brush using a little bit of pressure and it's enough to bend out the very thin styrene. Now remember this styrene is about as thin as a piece of paper. It bends it up real well and you can add some individual little dents and dings. You can do some really cool little effects like uh, adding these little gouges for example where I actually took a knife punched through the styrene and then proceeded to bend the panel out around that to create that effect. It uh, really creates this really cool bent metal appearance and I, you can see I really went to town doing it on this car here in particular. This one is REGX 4060 and I used some prototype photos to get the graffiti kind of pieced together from photos and again it's very heavily weathered using some oils which I built up in layers. I modeled all the individual little pits and scratches first with the oil effect and then I followed behind using a micro brush and some Bragdon and AIM products powders that I used uh, mainly some dark and light rust colors like this and I streaked them down with a brush and another micro brush to get that streaking effect of the fresh rust kind of running down the side and it's a great way to achieve that effect as you can see. I also added the mud splatter which these cars get. You got some uh, little patches, I added some safety striping, all the appropriate data which I spliced together using some smoke box graphics decal sheets. Uh, the trucks and couplers are nicely weathered on these. I used some KDs for these bad boys. Here you can see all that really nice graffiti. And again, the attention to the bowed panels and yeah, the gouges in the side, all that is really cool. All very, very, very awesome. Now looking at the load, the loads are the last thing I did. And in this case, this is real CND material that I actually gathered from uh, an actual CND car. I crushed it up to scale size using a blender and I inserted a foam core into this car and then a little bit of a layer of glue. I added the demolition material to the top and then I re-glued it in place after that using some Woodland Scenic, scenic Cement that I basically masked around the car and sprayed into the load 
to secure it. You can see it's nice and airtight, and it's free flowing. It looks very good. Uh, it's pretty much prototypical at that point. You can see how realistic those loads look. Uh, if we look at this other side real quick here, you just pretty much more of the same. You just got uh, just some more of the same in terms of the weathering, mud splatter, the prototype graffiti, safety stripings added, all the custom decaling. And then this one here, 4092, is modeled in the same manner. Uh, looking again at the sides, all pretty much the same as shown before. Just a lot of very nice weathering effects. Again, you've got the uh, tears in the side panels there, mainly on the top cord, starting to rust up quite a bit. Uh, not much going on in terms of underbody detailing. I added the rudimentary brake piping, like the main train line there, and some basic details like the retainer valve, things like that. I rearranged the brake details to be prototypical. And again, this one has the custom load. On the other side, pretty much the same, as you can see. But these cars took quite a bit of time, and I've made attempts at building these before, and they've never come out very well. These I'm actually completely satisfied with. I'm very happy with how these came out. I think they look really nice, and I'm very happy with how they came out. So those are the first two that I actually built. Again, very satisfied with those. Alright, so these two here are some BFTX versions of the CND gondolas. These are the Apache railway cars that they used to own back in the 2000s again. Unfortunately, all these cars have been retired and scrapped. Uh, but uh, I think another version of these cars are still out there. They're the Trox version, but they're painted gray. Anyways, I modeled these as they looked kind of in their final years again. And I actually kind of uh, kit bashed these using old, old ENC shops with chip car kits because currently they're the only company that makes these rolled in with chip cars, unfortunately. Uh, the kits are very poorly detailed, and to actually make one of these look nice, you've got to add quite a bit of detail. And I had to do a lot of revisions to the car body, a lot of detailing to the underbody, added a lot of scratch made details to these, um, let alone all the custom paint work and decal work, graffiti work that I did. In this case, I added a custom top cord made from styrene channel uh, to extend that to the correct length. I added my own custom ladders to these. I believe those are Plano ladders. I added Titchy uh, platform steps there. These have tangent trucks there. You can see that they have the uh, spinning bearing caps, which is pretty cool. I added KD couplers, a couple of lift bars, new end channel bracket there, uh, air hoses, uh, and then again some rudimentary brake detail on the bottom with the retainer valve mainly. Just the parts that you're generally going to be seeing on these cars that are the most uh, visible, the most obvious anyway. So I did this kind of build for both of these cars, the BFTX. 1550 and the 1544 which again are both prototypically accurate models uh, I used prototype photos which are kind of few online but you can still find some on roster uh, to just kind of uh, replicate the graffiti and things like that that's what I use the prototype photos for so I uh, tried to do the patching according to how this car looked and I only had the photo of the one side so I had to copy the graffiti from another car to do the opposite side but that being said, I was still able to prototypically model most of the patching. Uh, the BFTX decals there, real quick, uh, are custom made. I actually had these custom made. I've made attempts at getting these made before because it's just basically a little sticker patch that they use for these cars. And I always wanted that specific bold font uh, that no one ever made. Uh, but recently, for these cars, I went through smoke, or not smoke box uh, graphics, but uh, Circus City decals. Uh, Matt was nice enough to print me up a large sheet of these BFTX uh, print-on decals here. So you can see it's just a little square with the lettering and I chipped them up basically. I added the prototype number, the load length there, and then again all the black prototypical patching, safety striping, and all the old graffiti that is accompanying on these cars. Got some old patchwork there. And then tons of oil work to do all the uh, rust streaking and splatter. You got a lot of uh, rust dots hand painted on there. Tons of rust, enhanced again with some uh, powders and stuff, kind of just around, just to enhance things. Uh, custom CND load, this one actually has the orange tarp netting on it. And then again, just a really good overall look at that weathering. The opposite side is pretty cool, well actually we'll look at the end here. The end has the, again, custom decal patch, tons of rust. And then this side, with the uh, prototype graffiti. And again, notice that the patchwork is slightly different on this side. That's what I like about these old cars. Uh, they had these variations in them, uh, but that's what made them look really cool. Uh, so again, you got the custom patching, prototype graffiti, all the hand-painted rust effects. 
just kind of rendered lightly with you, uh, just using a little bit of, um, I believe I used odorless uh, thinner for these. Uh, but that one's my favorite out of this little lot that I did because of the patchwork. It's pretty unusual. Uh, they just basically repainted the ends and then part of the side but left the main car body uh, in the original Apache blue. So that's the first one. The next one is in slightly better shape. Uh, it's mostly original and you can see the paint's actually in better shape. It's a lot more vibrant. But again, this one is a custom patch similar to this one, built the same way. Pretty much the same uh, weathering effects. I did a lot more oil rendering on this to do the streaking. And then you can see the layered graffiti. Uh, the other custom decals here were done by Microscale. Uh, these were done by a friend of mine. He sent me a whole sheet of these Bill Frank Rail Service decals. Um, I only have a few of them left, so I can only model a few more of these cars. But that's ideal for these cars because they all have, well, most of them do. Uh, they have that little cool Bill Frank logo. So that's pretty cool. And again, custom load. Uh, the ends are really cool. It's just done with, again, a lot of oil rendering, building the, the oils very slowly, working them down to get that uh, streaking effect. And then again on this side with the really cool prototype graffiti and a little bit of a subtle difference in patching there. Really, it speaks for itself. You can really see what I was trying to accomplish. I like the layered graffiti effect there. You can see some older graffiti, kind of some newer graffiti. patchwork there. So yeah, it's hard to kind of say. I really do like this one, but this one is also equally cool. Uh, I really like both of them. And these are kind of my new standard for uh, gondola builds of this kind. And unfortunately, I have six more of these that I've already done that I'm honestly thinking of selling off because they're just not up to this standard. But this is basically my new standard for weathering for these kinds of cars. So I'm thinking of redoing my entire fleet. Uh, with this variation of this build, and again with the upgraded details like the new truck, some added extra added details, and just an overall better discipline in weathering techniques, uh, graffiti, and everything else. Um, it all worked out in the end. Again, this is countless hours spent just making these two, so it's a lot of work, but I am thinking of uh, making some more of these two. So on to some uh, locomotives here. The first one I was going to show you guys is HLCX 6145. A uh, buddy of mine, Mike, uh, hooked me up with this guy. I bought it from him. And these are really cool. These are the old run Atherton Tunnel Motors where they, they were doing the lease schemes on some of these. This one is actually an ex Rio Grande unit. Uh, it was later repainted to Union Pacific in the Armor Yellow and then later sold to GECX and then HLCX here. So it has some simplified patching. Now, this is a factory patch job. However, I had to end up uh, changing it a little bit because it was kind of incorrect prototypically uh, the patching wasn't done right so I ended up having to go back and strip all the old patching off and I actually redid it which is one of the first big things that I did to this locomotive so uh, the battery box cabinet there uh, the area on the cab was repainted to match the prototype I redecaled all this using the microscale decals same thing for the hood patchwork you can kind of see the variation in the color there from the faded UP armor yellow to the fresher kind of patch that's starting to age and then again the new HLCX decals there which are I believe from a micro scale sheet yeah those are uh, so I had to redo all that and then the big modification was modifying the tower gear and I actually have a video showing how I converted this locomotive basically I cut down the tower gear on the uh, rear of these locomotives that way I can have the full see-through effect for that radiator grill and unfortunately it does cut the power to this truck the truck can still pick up the current but it uh, is basically an unpowered truck so only the front truck is actually powered on this locomotive or any of my tunnel motors that I do this work to. Uh, however, I like the effect and since I only really run these locomotives as trailing B power, uh, it doesn't bother me too much. And they can still pull quite a bit even just with the one truck. Uh, so once I get all those modifications done, then it was time to actually detail it. So I added the uh, new North Little Rock style UP plow. I added the frame ditch lights, new coupler lift bars. I added the little receptacle holder there. Uh, air hoses, new MU cables. I modified the nose by removing the class lights, blanking those out, and then I repainted the nose. Uh, I did a lot of heavy weathering effects. I added the grab irons to the top there, the new horn, the new antenna. I added new sunshades because the ones on this locomotive were busted up pretty good. And you can see there's quite a bit of weathering to the frame, tons and tons of rust. I added the safety stripe into the sill. Uh, tons of work done to the trucks. I added the speed recorder, the new sanding lines there. And again, a good heavy bit of weathering to the trucks with the mud splatter and everything all enhanced. The fuel tank details added. Again, you can see an overall work 
of uh, heavy weathering on the side sills, on the frame, on the walkways, down the hood. Lots of rust, lots of grease. These locomotives really do get very dirty. Uh, darken the grill back there and then you can see all the rust coming down from that grill, which is pretty cool. Lots of rust effects done with oils and then you can see a uh, really cool effect here on the roof. I modeled all of the uh, paint chipping, kind of similar to what I had shown with the LTEX 4972 in the last video. Uh, just an overall uh, heavy weathering to the roof, got some greasy oily exhaust, uh, quite a bit of paint chipping on the cab roof there, uh, but all pretty cool. Again, there's the rear truck with that nice weathering. And then on the end, uh, again, I added all of the prototype specific details like the uh, knuckle brackets there, the new couple lift bar, the air hose. Uh, I did the modifications to the factory patching to make it a little more prototypical. So you can see I uh, grayed out the uh, patches a little bit and then I also added the blanks, the class lights, and painted the grab irons. And I also again added that um, MU cable holder there. They call it a Pepsi can receptacle. So that's all pretty cool. And then as we get to this side, engineer side, you can see again just uh, added an overall nice amount of detail to this. Lots of heavy rust. You can see the toolbox uh, top there. It's really rusted up. I added a cab interior to this one. You can see it has that inside there. It's got the seats, the control stand. All that's pretty cool. Lots of grease. You can actually see here where they peeled off the Union Pacific logo. That little bit of sticker residue was left on the battery box. So I modeled that. That's pretty cool. And again, just pretty much the same amount of detail as the others. Uh, basically the opposite side. But I'm pretty happy with how it came out. You know, I really like making these tunnel motors uh, and the way they come out. Uh, and you can see, really, there's so much work in this. And this took me uh, a couple weeks to put together, but it was worth the work. And I'm glad I got one of these. So this one will go nicely with the 6112 because I have the other version of this tunnel motor that they did, the 6112, right there in my drawer. That was the first one I did. So I'm happy to have both of these. There's another one, the Snoot version, but I don't think I'd ever get one of those. I don't really like the Snoot nose tunnel motors as much. This one's pretty cool though. So that's the 6145. I'm very happy with that one. Uh, the other locomotive I wanted to show you guys is HLCX 6319, kind of in the works right now. I've been working on this thing for a month and I got it mostly together. I've been doing a lot of heavy build, uh, kit bashing and modifying. This is an XQ and SNL unit that went to CP Rail. Uh, got a lot of really cool modifications and uh, of course these HLCX leasers, they always have so many cool features and of course the paint scheme was really iconic especially in the uh, 2000s on CSX so this is just a little sneak peek of this locomotive as it's in the works. It's currently uh, starting to be reassembled and I'm finishing up the touch up paint and I'm ready to start actually weathering this beast uh, and getting it back together really uh, but this is just a little sneak peek. I wanted to throw it in this video so you guys had the other uh, locomotive to see for now. I'm very happy with how it's coming along. It's really looking good. It's got this really cool patchwork on the nose and on the cab as you can see. It's got a CP Rail number which is interesting, or the font style rather. And then I did all this work to the back with the uh, custom made grill which I'll talk about later. It's got a lot of cool details overall, all kinds of cool little features that make it a really unique locomotive and one I wanted to model. It'll have the open cab door on the back too. You can see if you look in it you can actually see the cab interior with the control stand and the seat which is pretty cool. Uh, again, I'm really trying to focus on uh, detailing more with the inside of these locomotives now too. You know, I figured if I'm going to do the work, I don't want to have these things where they have the unprototypically real, unrealistic looking cabs where they're just completely see-through and empty and you can see wires. I want to see an actual cab interior. So in this case, you look into this thing, you can actually see the controls on the, um, the stand, you can see the seats and it all looks prototypical. So again, there's a little sneak peek of 6319. Probably by the next update this thing will actually be done and I'll also be able to show you guys the 6086 which is the other one I completed. I'll have that ready by then and then this one uh, so you guys can stay tuned for more on these. Alright, now to wrap up this video I'm going to show you guys three more Intermountain Autorex that I just got completed and I wanted to show you guys this first one here and I got two of these. These are the uh, special edition Red Logo CN Autorex I believe these were custom done for somebody, but anyway, my boy uh, Josh Demas hooked me up with two of these. Uh, so shout out to him, he's, uh, he's the master of finding these rare models. So he got me two of these, uh, thankfully, and I just lightly weathered these using some dark washes to uh, darken up the panels a little bit on the roof. I used some powders to grime up the sides, the walkways, the underframe there. And you can see I hand painted some prototype graffiti, which looks real, real sick. Um, again, just copied these off some prototype photos of similar cars, not the exact number, 
Uh, again, the number on this one is 702404. I didn't have exact pictures of this car, so I copied the graffiti from another. Uh, but you can see it uh, looks real good on this car. Uh, I love these Intermountain racks. The only th annoying thing you got to deal with is the fact that those doors keep popping off. So I just usually will glue those um, together. That way they stay, you know, they actually stay closed because they have a bad tendency to flop around. And on this side, again, some uh, prototype graffiti. I used some uh, various photos to kind of copy this. So you see it's got this really, really cool graffiti here where they actually worked around that logo. Because a lot of these artists are now smart. They know that the railroads will patch over these... Uh, lettering and everything like that so they'll usually paint their artwork around these now on these more modern cars uh, so you can see they worked around that you got this large piece of graffiti here and this one here which turned out really good and these are actually uh, from photos I personally took of a similar CN Auto Rack in Finley, Ohio uh, kinda near my home I was able to use the photos I took to copy the graffiti for this car so that was how I completed that first one and again the underbody is nicely weathered up and nicely weathered trucks of course the third one I'll grab, again, is another Rare Edition Red Logo CN. And as you can see here, I just, again, used some of my own photos to do the graffiti. Uh, just kind of weathered them up real lightly, again, keeping it simple. It's not too crazy. It's relatively light weathering here. You can see they got all the uh, real vibrant colored graffiti work here that I copied from photos. Notice that they, again, didn't uh, paint over that lettering. That's something you got to pay attention to when you're modeling cars like this. A lot of times they will work around that lettering, which is pretty clever. So you can see how they did that. A lot of artists do it, but not all of them. Some of them will still uh, uh, accidentally paint over that lettering. And just some other older graffiti there in the corner. Not as good. So you can see you got that layered effect of the graffiti on this side here. And then on the opposite side, I don't think this one, well, yeah, it does have a little graffiti. Uh, just a little bit more simpler graffiti here. It's just got kind of some scribble-style artwork. It's called throw-up graffiti. Just on this side to kind of just make it look a little bit more realistic. You know, again, not every car has beautiful graffiti. Some of them have this really shitty stuff, like this here in this case. So I just, again, copied this from photos of another TTX Autorack to get that done. So that's the two CNs. I'm real happy with how those came out. I really love those new intermounts. Those panels, uh, those were definitely the uh, the winner for me. The last one is a car that a buddy of mine hooked me up with again. And this one was sent to me dirt cheap. Uh, so I just took this and weathered it up as another older Union Pacific Auto Rack. So I had to fade this one down quite a bit first off. I just basically um, faded it down, lightened things up a little bit. You can see I uh, pretty much did all that, faded the panels down. Once I did that, I did a dark tone wash of burnt umber oil all over the car to get that nice grimy effect. I then did the graffiti, weathered over that, added some new patching where I needed to, in this case the re-stenciled lettering, the primer patches uh, are painted on there for the safety stripes where they patched over the old graffiti. There's some rust spots, some streaks, some uh, gatherings of grime here and there, but it's not as crazy as the other one I did that I showed a while back. The logo's starting to get a little beat up. You can see it's just slightly faded, but it's not too terrible just yet. Again, you can see all the nice weathering work there. Got some small little uh, chalk drawings there and things like that. Pretty common stuff on these cars. The uh, re-stenciled blue plate there. And the weathering on the end. The roof is pretty cool. It's got a lot of... Uh, metallic chipping on the top. Uh, it's nicely faded down with a whitewash and then I just kind of beat it up a little bit, scrubbed some of the paint off to get that really cool effect. And then I also added all those individual little pits and scars to the roof. On the opposite side, again not too, uh, not too crazy graffiti. Kind of some older stuff. You can see it's starting to really weather up quite a bit though. Real, real cool. And then this logo here, this Union Pacific logo, is quite a bit more beat up. You can see it's starting to rust over quite a bit too. It's really starting to pit. Uh, I really like doing these UP logos because a lot of them are really cool. Some of them go completely white on the bottom. Some of them completely peel off. Others are kind of a partial fade where they just look like this, but they don't have as many scratches. But in this case, this one is starting to peel and it's starting to get really beat up. Again, some prototype graffiti. Uh, a difference in patchwork on this side. You can see I used some different decals to make it look like this side was re-stenciled at a different time. And again, just an emphasis on the really cool prototype graffiti. Real neat. Again, I'm just really kind of letting it speak for itself.
So I really like that one. Uh, that came out really good. I'm really happy with that. That's uh, many, many hours right there getting this one done, even though it's uh, relatively light work. Oh, there's the underbody as well. You can see tons of kick-up spray, tons of grime. Really nice weathering on the trucks, of course. So that's the UP Auto Rack, and that is the third and last Intermountain Rack that I've officially gotten done. I'm kind of in limbo with these now at this point. I've gotten all of mine done, all 20 of them at this point. So I'm just kind of waiting for uh, Intermountain to make another run of these so I can pretty much buy some more runs. But in the meantime, you know, I might snag up some more cheap ones on eBay as they come along. You know, that way I can kind of keep adding. Anyways, that's all the cars I've gotten done for now. Like I said, in the next video, we'll be looking more at the locomotives over there. Those two HLCXs, we'll be able to cover those. And I got some more trash cars to show and some other general pro uh, products that I'm working on. So you guys can stay tuned for those in the next video. Keep an eye out for some more how-to videos coming up here pretty soon. And in general, more fun content coming down the pipeline here. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for staying in. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.